And it's time for another most amazing top 10 video. What? I don't know what that was, but hi guys, my name is Danny Berg, and today we've got a video that I'm honestly very, very excited about. I found it absolutely fascinating to prepare this one for you. It's the top 10 things that can't be explained. Now, just to make things clear, I'm not saying nobody will ever be able to explain these things in the future, but right now, we're all pretty much stumped. But who knows, maybe one of you guys will have the answers. Let's find out as we jump into our number 10, being right-handed. About 85% of all humans are right-handed. In every single country and culture across the world, the majority of people are right-handed and we don't really know why. Now, some chimpanzees and species of monkeys have been known to prefer one hand to the other when performing tasks, but not on the same scale as us humans. We do know that it started to appear in ancient human species when they began to use tools and preferred to use their right hands to their left, and some scientists think it's linked to language in the brain somehow, but why? Who knows? So if you guys tell me in the comments section which hand you use and why you use it, maybe we'll figure it out. Coming in at number nine now, we have the Fermi Paradox, or simply, where are the aliens? Now there are hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy and hundreds of billions of galaxies in the universe, which means that for every grain of sand on Earth, there's about 10,000 stars out there. That's a lot of planets around those stars and some of those planets should be Earth-like. In fact, scientists estimate there should be about 100 billion, billion Earth-like planets in the universe. And if even just 1% of those planets developed intelligent life like us, then there should be about 100,000 intelligent civilizations in just our galaxy alone. So where are they all? The night sky should be filled with lots of signals and signs of them, but for as long as we have listened, it's been silent. The Fermi Paradox has produced a number of theories, but no real solid explanations. And guys, if you do like the sound of that one and you want to learn more about it, then we actually did a video right up here on our other channel all about that topic, so go and check it out. But we'll do it right after this video, because next up at number 8, we have Stonehenge. Now I can tell you a lot about Stonehenge, I can tell you it was built between four and 5,000 years ago on Salisbury Plain in England, I can tell you that the stones are up to 30 feet tall and weigh 25 tons on average, and that some of the stones came from as far away as 140 miles, but I can't tell you why it was built. Yeah, nobody can really. We know it was some sort of sacred site for the ancient people that built it. It appears to line up with the rising and setting of the sun throughout the year. Others say it was a burial ground, a ritual site, or just a massive team building exercise. Who knows? I don't. Alright, sitting at the number 7 spot, why is the sun's atmosphere hotter than its surface? It's something that has baffled NASA for quite some time. The surface of the sun is about 6,000 degrees Celsius, which makes sense, I mean, it's literally the surface of the sun. But what doesn't really make sense is why the sun's atmosphere, better known as its corona, is about 200 times hotter, sitting at millions of degrees Celsius. NASA said it's like the air around a candle being 200 times hotter than the candle itself. Now, they have been working on this problem for a while, with many theories ranging from the temperature being affected by the magnetic field, to maybe heated plasma jets that erupt into the atmosphere, but there's still a lot of heated debate going on. Sorry. Moving on to number 6, why do we... Yawn. <sighs> Did any of you guys just yawn when I said yawn? I'm tired. Psychologist Robert Provine once described yawning as the least understood, most common human behaviour, and I kind of agree. Do you remember being told by someone in your life that yawning is when your body gets a sudden jolt of oxygen to wake the brain up or prepare us for something? Well, studies have shown that yawning provides no such oxygen boost. At the moment, there's a theory going around that yawning helps cool our brains down, but opinion is still pretty divided. And when they have explained that to us, they can fully explain explain why seeing other people yawn makes us yawn. Just like earlier. Now I'm pretty tired thinking about it. Even seeing my cat yawn makes me yawn. Next up at number 5 we have the placebo effect. If someone is told the pill they're about to take will do something, sometimes it will have an effect, even if the pill contained absolutely nothing. 
That is the placebo effect. In some studies, up to a third of people reported positive reactions to placebo pills. That's basically people who are ill being given a fake drug and somehow feeling better. It seems that somehow, sometimes the body and the mind react to what it kind of expects to happen. All we know is that we don't really know why. Coming in at number four, we have cancer in large mammals. Now, sadly, one in five humans die from cancer. It's caused by out of control cell division. So, logically, the more cells an animal has, the more likely it is that one of those cells will turn cancerous. But for some reason, animals much larger than us have almost no signs of cancer, even though they have far more cells. Bowhead whales and elephants are good examples. They are many times bigger than humans, and bowheads even live for 200 years, which means plenty of time for their many cells to get cancer and yet they almost never seem to. We don't know exactly why, we just know it's in their genes. Not those genes, yeah, thank you. Moving on to number three, why do magnets have two poles? We all know that magnets have a north pole and a south pole, but if you cut a magnet in half, you don't get just one pole, you create a smaller magnet with two poles. The thing is though, according to the laws of physics, there isn't a real reason why single magnet poles can't exist, and yet they just don't like anywhere. After a lot of work, scientists did manage to create a so-called monopole in a lab in 2014, but as for finding their existence naturally in the world, not a single one has been found, and we just don't know why. Okay, next up at number two, why do cows always face north or south? It's a very strange phenomenon that has a lot of people pretty stumped. Even a lot of farmers didn't realize this in recent times. Numerous studies have found that when cows are sitting down or grazing, they tend to do so in a north-south direction. Scientists also noticed that wild deer do this too. Now, they're not the first animals we've observed having some sort of relationship with the Earth's magnetic force. Birds and fish have been known to use it for navigation, but when it comes to cows and deer favoring this whole north-south alignment, yeah, it's not really making sense to us. You can even see it on Google Maps. There's loads of pictures of cows just facing in a north direction when they're grazing. Hopefully they explain this one soon because kind of creeps me out a little bit. And finally at number one, we have reached sleeping. And we talked a bit about yawning earlier on, but this question might be even bigger. Why exactly do we sleep? Seems like a pretty dumb question, but the truth is we spend about a third of our lives sleeping and yet we aren't really sure why it happens. There is a lot of disagreement within science on the subject. Some say it's to do with forming memories, others say it clears toxins from the brain or perhaps even helps us conserve energy when there's nothing really productive to do at night. The theories go on and on, but none of them have provided a concrete observable answer to exactly why so many living things, from cockroaches to elephants and hormonal teenagers need sleep to survive. And saying because we get tired isn't an answer. Trust me, I tried that one. Do any of you guys have the answers to any of those? Any good theories on them? If you don't have the answers, then maybe you have the questions. What other unexplainable things have you come across in your life? I'll be down there in the comments section with you guys with some serious head scratching. But until next time, thanks as ever for watching Most Amazing Top 10. My name is Danny Burt. You can find me on Instagram somewhere down there. And I'll see all you guys in the next one.